people seem to be very receptive to that. And of course, the controversial Montreal theory, sir. Uh, can you tell us a little bit, because I mean, I, I just edited the thing, I just pointed a camera, you know, in the long run. You're the brainstorm behind that whole thing. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that and how, why was that a thing that you wanted to do? Um, I had always been very intrigued by conspiracy theories and uh, uh, very pragmatic thinkers that question the status quo and question um, the norms of society that, that are being fed to you, whether it be from a political standpoint, a religious standpoint, um, you know, very inspired by, by guys like Jesse Ventura and Bill Maher and Penn Jillette, um, who really came out and, and, and spoke their mind, even if it wasn't, you know, the, what society wanted you to believe. Um, and I figured if there was a way to apply that to wrestling, um, it'd be a very unique, untapped kind of market with that. And uh, I'd always been very intrigued by the Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Vince McMahon, uh, Montreal Screwjob uh, uh, saga. And I had never thought too deeply about the Montreal situation until I had heard um, Steve Carino at one point uh, tell some people he didn't believe that Mon the Montreal screw job was actually a screw job. He thought that Brett was secretly involved in it. And, you know, I'd never thought of it that way. And it was always in the back of my mind. Um, and, and, and finally around 2009 or so, uh, I was rewatching wrestling with shadows and I just watched Bill Maher's religious. Um, I was watching Jesse Ventura's conspiracy theory. It was about to premiere, um, and kind of this perfect storm came, uh, in my mind. And I thought to myself, you know, nobody has told this potential story that could be out there. Um, you know, look at people like Michael Moore, which as, as polarizing as Michael Moore is, um, you know, he goes out there and tries to find the story that everybody else is afraid to talk about. Um, if there's, if there is a story like that in pro wrestling without being tasteless, um, that's this. So I wanted to go out there and, and stir some things up and ask some questions nobody was asking and, and uh, above all else, make people think because hopefully people can look at how in just a few hours we can create this whole potential alternate reality of what Montreal was so we thought and what it maybe could have been in reality beneath the surface if people can take that line of thinking and apply it to their everyday lives, um, that could actually help with some major problems and some major issues in the real world. So I wanted to entertain. I wanted to make people think. I wanted to make people talk. And and humbly speaking, I think I accomplished that. Definitely. Uh, you, you definitely got some interesting responses uh, from what I've been hearing. Uh, what? Uh, tell me, what, what, what's the most surprising response you've gotten from this project? Um... The most one of the most surprising things to me was uh, really pitching the idea to, to, to people within the wrestling industry, mm -hmm. uh, both before production and after production, because you really get a sense of how um, divided the issue is. And of course, we can discuss it in fun because... Um, nobody was actually hurt from the issue, and, and, and obviously we weren't directly offended, uh, affected by it. Um, you know, the fact that I'll come up to some people and, 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 and tell them the concept, and they'll say, you know, you really believe that? Are you kidding me? And um, other people will say, you know, well, of course that's the way it was. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've had people who, who, who say there's no way Brett could have known, and people say there's no way Brett could have not known. And these are all very highly intelligent, respected people in our business. Um, but they all see it a different way. And, and just walking around at WrestleCon uh, last April, uh, WrestleMania weekend in New Jersey, and being able to talk to some of the people about it um, and, and, and have some very favorable response. And, oh, that's interesting. And, oh, I'd like to see it. Oh, I always thought about that. And here's my theory and, and, and stuff like that. And, and consequently, guys, I would pitch in pre-production, hey, would you like to be a part of this? Oh, no, I don't want that kind of heat. Oh, no, that's not my kind of thing. Um, 
you know, some people love it. Some people are scared of it. Some people uh, have, have their own theory. Some people think it's completely preposterous. Um, you know, it, it's no one reaction. It's just the variety of reactions I've gotten and continue to get. Definitely, and we, we there's a great series. I, I love that we we did this at uh, WrestleCon. Uh, uh, you went around and got other people's takes on the theory. I hear we're showing a video that we've been uh, pushing around here on the network with Bill After. Actually, you had a chance to talk to uh, and stuff like that that people can go check out. And and you get a lot of comments too for this stuff too. We absolutely do. And I actually saw Bill the uh, the other week at uh, at Extreme Rising, and and Bill came up to me, and, and his remark was he was surprised at, at how much traffic our interview had gotten. He was very pleasantly surprised by that. So, um, you know, just goes to show that the interest continues to grow. But we talked to Bill after who who introduced Andy Kaufman to Jerry Lawler, so he has his uh, uh, his hands in in, in past wrestling. Uh, uh, conspiracies and hoodwinking so to speak uh talk to blue meanie who's a big documentary fan uh talk to pj polacco just incredible who was part of the click very close with Shawn michaels very close with triple h um you know we talked to paul london we didn't accomplish anything but it was really fun um <laughs> that's right and 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 uh uh you know having a chance to uh talk to johnny gargano and sammy callahan and, and guys like that um, I talked to Jimmy Corderas uh, uh, on the internet a, a few weeks ago. It's at MontrealTheory.com. We got Jimmy's take on it, and Jimmy was one of the referees there in Montreal. Uh, just goes to show you, everybody has an opinion, and I would say there are at least easily uh, another half dozen guys that had very vocal opinions on the topic that uh, uh, either we didn't have time to get on camera or, or weren't comfortable getting on camera, uh, so I won't reveal them specifically, but these are names just as big, if not bigger, than the ones we put online. Um, and, 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 and who knows? Hopefully we'll, we'll have a chance to have some of them talk someday soon. Uh, because the, the thing about Montreal Theory is, is this isn't something that's going to go away. Mm-hmm. You know, 50 years later, we're still, we're still debating what happened to John F. Kennedy. Uh, uh, you know, we're still debating what, what really happened on the moon. Um, you know, wrestling fans will always debate Montreal and always discuss Montreal. And hopefully Montreal Theory will become... Uh, uh, you know, a companion piece to, to Wrestling with Shadows or Survivor Series 97. Even. 